What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how I process this image right here, which was requested by an Instagrammer about a week or two ago when I posted this photo, and I told him I would do that for him. It is very similar to a tutorial I've done in the past on Star Trails, but there are some tweaks that I did with this photo that I'm gonna be sharing, so hopefully you do learn something new here. Now, this is my foreground shot that I took during twilight. Uh, I shot this at ISO 100. Uh, with the 15 millimeter Laowa lens on my Z6. And this is just so I have a nice clean foreground shot. Plus there's other photographers here this night and they're walking around with red light and white light. So I knew trying to get a shot like this later on at night was gonna be really difficult dealing with other photographers. Now here's the same photo, but I pulled out some of the blue in the sky, and that's just going to make life a little bit easier when I go to blend it with the star trails. Sometimes you get blue fringing when you have trees and leaves like this, so that just is a little trick right there to help you guys out. Now here's the series of photos that I started during Astronomical Twilight. My ISO was 3200, my shutter speed was 25 seconds, again with the 15mm Laowa at f4. I probably could have dropped the ISO to around 2000 and that would have helped me get colorful stars. But what I ended up doing was lowering my highlights and then just increasing my vibrance and saturation to the raw files. And then I exported them as uh, smaller JPEG files since I'm doing this recording. Trying to do this with raw files definitely would have froze a lot of my programs. So that's why I downscaled them to JPEGs. And as far as any other editing to these photos, I left it all alone. I didn't increase sharpness. I left the noise reduction as is. And the key is to make sure you have lens correction turned off. Sometimes the star trails come out really weird looking if you click that. So uh, make sure all that is off. Now I'm going to grab around 100 photos. Let's see here. And then we're going to bring them into Photoshop. Now this is going to vary depending on how big your files are, how fast your computer is. You know, let me just bring in 95. Go to Photo, Edit In, open as layers in Photoshop. With my raw files, I could only bring in around 50 to 75 images into Photoshop at a time. Uh, anything more than that, it'd get really slow or it would crash Photoshop. So again, this is going to vary depending on your computer and the size of your images. Okay, so here's the first set of 100 images in Photoshop and I'm gonna select them all. Change my blend mode to lighten. And that created the star trails. Now to make it a little smoother, what I ended up doing was changing the opacity for the beginning and the end of the star trails. So in these first 100 photos, let's say, I made my first photo 1%, oops. Then my second photo 2%, 3%, and then so on and so forth, you get the idea. Now there's a couple different ways you could do this. I could go from you know 1% all the way up to 100%, um, just one, two, three, four, five. Uh, sometimes what I like to do is uh, increments of let's say uh, five. So once I get up to one, two, three, four, five percent, I might do five photos at five percent if I have a lot of images, uh, and then I'll do the next five photos at ten percent. I kind of skip, you know, seven, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, and then I'll go from 10 to 15, five photos at 15%, all the way up to 100%. So there's different ways you could do that. You could try and just do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or you could do increments of uh, two or five. Basically, experiment. Now, for this particular photo, I ended up doing um, 1% all the way up to five. And then starting at 5%, I did increments of five. So, you know, I did five at 5%, five at 10%, five at 15%, five images at 20%, and so on and so forth. So um, until I hit 100%. And once you do that with your set of images, I'm not gonna do it for all these, but you guys get the idea. Then you flatten your images. And then it's okay if you don't get up to 100% in your first, let's say, uh, 100 photos. If you bring 100 photos into Photoshop and you only get up to 75%, it's okay, flatten them. Um, when you bring in the next set of images, just pick up where you left off. So if you left off at 70, then your next set of images is gonna be 75. 
you know, 80, 85, 90 to 100. And then you're gonna flatten that and save it. And we're gonna get out of Photoshop right now. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Let me bring up my starred images. So I already went through all 600 photos doing what I was just explained. You can see the first set is very low opacity and then it starts getting richer and richer until we hit 100%. So these next set of photos are at 100%. And then it's going to start going back down from 100 all the way to 1% on the tails of these star trails. You can see it starts getting lighter and lighter. And the reason why there's so many is just, like I said, I had 600 photos to blend, um, so I couldn't bring all of them in at once. But once you have all your sets of images, then you go to Photo, Edit In, Open As Layers in Photoshop, just like you've been doing uh, for all the other photos. Okay, so here's our images in Photoshop, and all we have to do is combine them now. So I'm going to select them all, change the blend mode to lighten, and then we're going to flatten it. And if you bumped your tripod like I did here, um, this tree is not going to be perfectly aligned with the foreground shot that I took earlier in the evening. So what you can do to make life a little bit easier is take a spot healing brush or your healing brush and get rid of some of these uh, branches here. The auto align doesn't really do a great job for this particular image. So I notice if I get rid of these tree branches, at least the really skinny ones, um, it makes life a little bit easier so I don't have to worry about trying to align them up. And I'm just going to do this really quickly. Um, I know this this trail, star trail right here looks a little weird and that's just because um, I downscaled the photo and I'm zoomed in quite a bit so it doesn't look the greatest. But this is just a little tip if you are slightly off, if you've like bumped your tripod um, this could help and I'm just doing this really quickly so some of the star trails are getting really wavy I would definitely zoom in a lot tighter and use the healing brush and make it a lot nicer I'm just giving you guys a quick idea on several ways to make your life a little bit easier when you go to blend this with your foreground All right, and I'm gonna show you one more quick tip on how to make these star trails even smoother so let's file save this and for the last step before I blend this with the foreground I bring it into affinity photo which you may or may not have basically it's like Photoshop but a lot cheaper and it has a radial blur tool that's similar to Photoshop but I actually like it a little bit better in here because I feel like I could be more accurate with it so go to layer um, new live filter layer blur and then radial blur and you just want to check off preserve alpha and then increase the angle and this is just so I know where the center point is which is right here and now I just want to drag it where the north star is and then I'm gonna lower the angle degrees to around 0.5 degrees you don't want to go too crazy with this you just want to use it to smooth out some of these star trails a little bit more and it is going to blur the foreground so when you blend in your new foreground, you might have to clone out some of these trees or whatever your foreground might be if they extend past the new foreground. So that's just one thing to consider if you're going to use the radial blur tool. All right, and that's pretty much it. I'm not gonna show you guys how I blend it with the foreground. I've done so many videos on how to achieve a nice blend, but uh, here's the final product right here. So those were the condensed down version of all the steps that I took to create the image. It is a lot of work, but uh, I think the final results speak for themselves. Hopefully this helps you guys out. Take care. Bye-bye.